We'll send the camera in first in case there's danger. <laughs> Which there's likely to be. Yeah, it seems like a bloody um, toot come in two minutes. This is a bit like a. What, what can you see? Because you're Howard Carter, yeah? Yeah. What can you see? You're not looking at Scarab beetles. No. Isn't it? Endless treasures. Endless treasures. And a mummy. How's it look? I think we've been hard. Yeah. <laughs> that looks awful. So I've no idea how thick these are supposed to be when they're when they're made, but I'm sure it's a lot thicker than it is now. It's not actually down to the rivets, just about. But yeah, certainly not much material there. So what I'm showing you here is possibly see on camera. Well, it's kind of, kind of rainbow colours. That shows that this has got very hot. Uh, hot enough to form oxides that have discoloured the metal. Mm. This one's not as bad. But that's where it's been constantly slipping. Yeah, I don't like the look of that. It's time to work out then how to fit the new engine into the space where the old engine was. They're quite different engines. The old one was a V8, so it was four cylinders long. The new one is a straight six, so obviously six cylinders long. And it's a physically longer engine by quite, <laughs> quite a bit. Now, were it a smaller engine, I'd be inclined just to hang it over the space and, and take it from there. But because the engine alone weighs half a ton, and we're going to install it engine and gearbox together, rather than just dangle it in situ and try and work out where to put the brackets. I've taken an idea from Project Binky and made an engine template. I'm sure most of you know Project Binky, those, those of you who don't, there are a couple of chaps that are um, working on a project to build a four-wheel drive Mini. That's, that's the short version of it. <laughs> and it, it's brilliant. Um, their approach to engineering is quite different to, to ours. Um, yeah, better is probably the word. Um, yeah, it's a great series. Anyway, what they do with fitting then, all their big components, rather than try and just round them in, they make a template of that component and offer it up to the Mini and work out how much they're going to have to butcher of the Mini to fit, fit it in. So with a bit of careful measurement of the DAF chassis um, I came up with this thing made from offcuts mostly that I had lying around. This is it then, this is what I came up with. The rear engine mounts which are on the bell housing of the gearbox actually are here and the holes are in exactly the right place and these are the front engine mounts these four holes here at the front. Uh, I'll drop into the DAF and it'll make more sense. I expect it's got invisible now as soon as I put it with the rest of the metalwork that's, that's uh, knocking about here. But possibly you can make out here are the rear engine mounts, here are the front engine mounts and these bars here give the distance between them. So this then gives me the dimensions that I need to work with, with the Zill. So we went all the way to the other end of the country, we met a nice chap called Luke and with a bit of huffing and puffing managed to extract from his garage this and these. And we were very happy about it. <laughs> but what is it? What have we actually got? Well to power the pipes you need a wind chest which is a box full of air and then it has valves in it, the valves open and let the air through into the pipe that you want to sound. Our one note organ has a box underneath which is a wind chest. Um, both of the current ranks of pipes are mounted on wind chests. The next stage of our project was to build a big wind chest to carry multiple ranks of pipes. And that's 
what this is <laughs> which is great so if these parts are serviceable and it is a big if uh, this will provide a huge leap forward in in the project which is great I, I can sound this one here we go <laughs> We'll be exploring this in detail, no doubt. More detail than anyone could possibly want. So for now, it remains for me to get all this under cover, safely out of the weather, and um, wait for Mark to come down and make some sense of it all. I figured that it's entirely possible that um, uh, you might want a quick rundown of how this system works. Um, also, uh, I don't think Max actually knows properly, so I think maybe if I now we've got the thing in bits and we can actually see the action, I'm going to have a quick run through of uh, of what happens here. So each one of these magnets, when it's energised with the action voltage, which will be around 15 volts, something like that, um, they uh, it has a uh, if, you, if you look down here, you'll see there's a electromagnet coil gubbins down in there. So when that's actuated, um, that opens a little valve in here that normally is in a position where wind goes from inside this chest because this would be connected onto here um, is able to pass through here and inflate this little pouch little leather pouch so that's the normal off state it's fully inflated when you energize this magnet it flips over the little valve pulling the valve down into the magnet opening this exhaust port here when that exhaust port's open, the pressure of the air inside this chest collapses this, this little pouch. The, the actual movement is tiny, it's probably what, a couple of millimetres? What that then uh, uh, happens, it, slightly bigger valve than this in here, a little changeover valve that goes from when it's in its fully inflated state, when it's supplying air through these holes, which corresponds to these holes, filling up these bigger pneumatic motors, these bigger pneumatic pouches here, I'm just hinged at the back. When this is activated, when the, the uh, uh, solenoid is activated, this collapses, allowing the air to exhaust through these holes, thereby collapsing this motor, and I don't know if we can make it out in there with the, the light, but um, opening that valve there, which allows the air from, from this this chest to make it into the pipe. So this is sat on its side at the moment. The pipes sit all along this top surface here and this chest itself uh, has space for 244 pipes on it and that is the basics of how um, this kind of um, twin stage electro pneumatic chest works. Um, it's, uh, it's quite a work of art, absolutely lovely bit of kit. In here then we've got the new clutch kit. So the clutch kit is the friction plate, a new pressure plate and a thrust bearing. So now I've got my reconditioned flywheel and the rest of the clutch kit. I can put it all back on the engine, put the gearbox back on and it's ready to stick in the truck. You can see here where the um, where there's been the water ingress. Um, this particular pallet, and there was a couple of others. The, um, the this would have been done with a, a sort of water-based glue, like a sort of um, animal glue, and it's the 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 pallet materials actually ended up stuck to the chest, so it's come unstuck. It's in good condition. It's not really bad. I don't think it needs re-leathering. But um, you know, this definitely needs gluing back on, which makes us have to decide whether we're going to use animal glue again, go traditional, or whether we just go with the trusty Evo stick and have done with it. 
Um, so yeah, a little bit more work than we expected, but not not horribly so. half of this away to fit the front engine mounts but it looks like it's all going to work which is great so the rear mounts have got to come in by about a millimeter each which I think there's enough tolerance on the slots where they're mounted down for that to happen the front mounts are spot on I've just been to measure the engine and I need two inches clearance from the centre line of the mountings to the front of the engine where the pulley is. And I'm going to take the fan off, so it's just a pulley I've got to worry about here. And I think... Yeah. Brilliant. There's just going to be room. People are bound to ask, how are you going to attach the DAF engine into the Zeal truck? which is a perfectly reasonable question. If we were to try and take the DAF engine and mate it to the Zill gearbox, it would mean building up a whole thing here, the most bell housing would have to be completely adaptive from the, the Zill engine that it's expecting onto this DAF engine. Instead of that, we're not going to bother with that at all, we're not bothering with the Zill gearbox, we're using the DAF engine and the DAF gearbox. We also have to modify the linkage to make it come straight out instead of the convoluted linkage that it had on a Ford control vehicle. But it essentially be DAF engine, DAF gearbox, and then use this, which is the little intermediate prop shelf we've just taken off the Zill, and this will eventually have a DAF end to it and a Zill end to it. We're going to cut this in half and modify it, and then the transmission goes engine, gearbox, new prop shaft, and then transfer box. So we're going to keep the existing Zill transfer box, which unlike a Land Rover which sits on the side. The Zill one sits all by itself and then it feeds from there to the back and to the front, giving us six wheel drive on the bar. Hope that's clear. Oh yeah. Anyway, do you want to put your screw on? Yeah, you need to give it a quick blast on that. Yeah, we'll do that. Alright. Release some gas here then my I don't know how it was to deal with the handles. Well, we did need a lot to do, but currently we don't. <laughs> <laughs> that was almost grey, isn't it? Um, I'm going to replace those yellow ones. I mean, this is why it's entirely possible. You can see where they've been trapped under the gasket. But this is why it's entirely possible that this is all going to have to come out again because uh, I don't know what state. This wiring's going to be, that's all bare there, isn't it? Yeah, that's just shit. Let's try and get those lined up at the beginning. That should just mean the scrolls are lined up. How's that? Yet. Welcome to the new engine bay. A lovely diesel instead of that nasty old petrol nonsense. Loads of clearance. It fits really nicely actually. So we kept most of the original cross member here and the pulley sits in beautifully. Sits in the new, oh well, on its original mount but in the new position just swimmingly. Um, we're up against the bulkhead. That was one bit that was an unknown to me was whether we'd clear the bulkhead and it's it's just spot on isn't it. So the only issue we have is here where the um, the Zill steering box and the DAF um, pump, let's see, compressor and the hydraulic pump in one unit there. 
they're currently just about touching which we can't have so my plan then is to just take the front engine mounts which are these rubber things here and I'll stack out one of them by probably just 10 mil or so and tilt the engine over just fractionally and that will clear there everything else just fits really well right I reckon the kettle might have boiled yeah let's do that yeah it's a cup of tea I think jolly good jolly good